Okay, you're going on a great multi-day rafting trip, and you want to get a lot of great footage. What do you do? I just got back from a trip and I had exactly the same question going in. Do I take my GH5 and get a housing for it? Or do I just take pictures from the shore? Or do I get a waterproof camera just for this trip? I opted for getting the GoPro Hero 6, and I wanted to show you all the little bits and pieces I brought along with me to make sure I got all the footage I wanted and why you should consider getting the same things because I think it really worked out well for me. Now, if this is the kind of video you like, click on the subscribe button and then click that notify button next to that. That way you'll find out about all the videos that I create as soon as I post them onto YouTube. And if any of the things I say sound ridiculous, leave a comment down below in the comment section or send me a tweet. I, I go by Technovangelist on Twitter. Okay, first, the GoPro. Small, light, and waterproof. Downsides are that it's small and light, but heavy enough that if I drop it, it's going down into the Colorado River. And in the words of some of our guides, the Grand Canyon is a GoPro graveyard. If you drop this thing, it's gone. There is no recovery. It's, it's gone. So don't drop this. Have you lost a GoPro on one of your trips? Let me know about that in the comments below. Another person on the trip relied on a simple hand strap, but some of the rapids that we go through on the Colorado through the Grand Canyon are some of the biggest rapids in the world. You need to use both hands just to grip onto the ropes, to the anything you can grab hold of, just to stay in the boat because it is a roller coaster ride. Holding on to the GoPro at the same time, you just can't do it. So you really need to have an option to stay hands-free. And sometimes you want to see the boat itself and with you in it. So for that, you want to have some sort of pole as well. Move the camera further away from you, kind of like a selfie stick. So let's start there. I got the Smatry S3C floating extendable pole. This gets a camera up to three feet away and allows for some amazing shots. And you can go a lot shorter too. So I can go really short. Yeah, so that also works out well. It's not perfect, but I'm really glad I had it. If you want more detail about the strengths and the weaknesses of this pole, check out another video that I made on just that. Now the end of this pole has the standard GoPro three prong mount. So I can unscrew this. And I wanted to be able to easily swap out the camera between this pole and some other mounts that I had as well. So I wanted to have some sort of quick release system. Now I use the Arca Swiss system on all my other cameras. So I wanted to be able to mount an Arca Swiss mount onto here as well. This means I won't have to deal with the screws every time I move that to a different mount. I just use that quick release mount. So the challenge was going to be finding something that is a Arca Swiss, but also really light because a lot of the Arca Swiss mounts that I have for tripods, they're really heavy ball heads or other types of heads. And I wanted to stay light. How can I do this all while staying really, really light? So I got this action mount conversion adapter that lets me mount regular camera accessories. So let me go ahead and put this on, tighten that down. And to that, I add this thing. This is a fishbone style Arca Swiss mount. And so I just uh, put the little adapter in here and tighten it down. And now that thing is mounted in here. And so that's why I have this standard screw thread here. So I'll just kind of attach that on. This is something you want to get really tight one time, and then you don't really have to touch it. So now that I've got the Arca Swiss mount, I need to get the Arca Swiss plate that will connect to the rest of the stuff. So that's what this thing is. I can just kind of slide this in here. And so now that is attached. So the plate that I went with comes from Peak Design. Now I've got a lot of Peak Design equipment. I've got their bags, I've got straps, I've got all sorts of things, uh, as well as my, my capture clip, which I'll show you in just a second. Now it looks a little bit flimsy. It looks like a piece of plastic, but it survived really, really well and I didn't have any problems. But I got the Fishbone Arca Swiss mount just a few days before I left. And I really hadn't had a chance to see if it was gonna be any good. So I got these steel tether lanyards as well. It comes in a pack of five, I only really needed one. So I've got that, and then I've got one of these Night Eyes S-Beaner Micro Lock Clip. 
And so now I can just kind of, when I attach this, I can just clip on this loop. This was easier on the boat. Okay, there we go. And now this thing, even if it comes loose, which it did once, it's still attached. So I'm not gonna lose my GoPro. Okay, so that screw that on. Now attached to that, I've got the iShox S Small Grap 40. Now this is a mount that's got the GoPro two prong that goes into the three prong and then the three prong on the other end and these two ball mounts. And what's really great is that I've got one screw to unscrew and now they all kind of just move around whichever way you want. And that's super, super flexible and you can do move these things around in a lot of different ways and it all gets locked down with a single really, really big screw. Now this, a lot of the GoPro screws are these tiny little things and they're just a little bit of knurled plastic at the end or metal, I think this one's actually metal, but um, it's just this little thing that you grab onto and turn. Whereas this is just this nice big handle. You do one thing and it loosens up these two balls. There are cheaper alternatives to this. Uh, this was, I don't know, 30, 40 bucks. And there are definitely cheaper alternatives, but they rely on these screws. And I didn't know it at the time, but I am so glad I went with this. You see, when you're down on the Colorado River, going through the Grand Canyon, it is super, super dry. You can pump you know, moisturizer into your hands, you know, aloe and all sorts of other things onto your hands and try to get them, uh, get the moisture back in your hands, but it's never gonna work. It's never gonna be good enough. Your hands get so dry. I mean, my hands, my fingers are still a bit dry and this is three or four weeks later. You know, when I would touch my finger to my thumb and kind of rub it, it felt like sandpaper. And, you know, within a few days, just grabbing onto the knurled metal and plastic, it got to the point where it hurt. It really hurt turning these screws. So I wanted to turn them once and forget about them and rely on this thing for everything else. Now I actually bought a cheaper version before I found this, but the cheaper version also didn't move around as nicely as this does. So I'm really glad that I bought this. So let's go ahead and attach that to my Okay, so now that's all attached. On the other end of the GRAP 40 goes the GoPro case. And plug that guy in here. And the last step is to insert the GoPro. It seals up and you're good to go. Okay, so why, again, why did I go with this uh, Arca Swiss? Well, I wanted to be able to quickly and easily move to a hands-free situation. This works great if I'm holding it and I'm sticking it out there on the boat, getting some uh, kind of aerial views of the boat and everyone in the boat. It worked out really well, but I wanted to be able to go hands-free as well. So let's unclip this and loosen this. Now, a few years ago, I got a capture clip from Peak Design. This was the first thing that they offered on a Kickstarter. And this I would mount onto the strap for my life vest. Uh, you're required to wear a life vest the entire time you're on the river. So I would mount this on the life vest and then the camera just kind of clips in and now it's locked in. And then I would just adjust this so that it works out well. And so now this is on my life vest strap and I can grab on to both ropes with both hands as I'm going down the river and it all stays looking at what I'm looking at. Really nice to have it up here, high enough that you get some good shots, but still on your body enough so that you can kind of control it just by kind of moving your shoulder into the right space as you're going down the rapids. Now the Peak Design Capture Clip, they're amazing devices. So I'm gonna talk more about this piece in a separate video. So watch out for that. They'll probably come in in a week or so. So that's about it for all the attachments I need to get the camera on a pole and on the strap. But there's of course, there's another consideration you need to keep in mind and that is power. The GoPro is tiny. There's a lot of stuff they need to squeeze in and of course the, the, the battery has to be really, really small. So take that out. 
So there's the battery. Use, use the GoPro for just a couple hours and the battery is dead. So I went ahead and bought four Wasabi Power batteries, which worked out really, really well for this use. And I also bought a triple charger. Now I didn't realize how valuable this would be because going down the river, usually I would capture enough footage that I would go through about three of these batteries. One time I went through four, but usually I'd go through three of them. And actually I lost one battery, so it was nice that I grabbed four extras. But the problem is at the bottom of the canyon, there's no power. Now the triple battery charger, it's USB. It's just a USB powered device. And so I have a bunch of these RAV Power battery packs. These are 26,800 milliamp hour batteries. I actually had a bunch from a previous project at work. And so I took four of these with me just in case, you know, I was thinking I'd need at least four to hold me over for the entire week. Turns out I barely went through one of the four dots on one of these batteries. So I could have gone with just one, maybe two just to be sure. But uh, I brought four uh, and they're kind of heavy. So if you do this, maybe just bring one or two of these things, but get a big one. Now I'll talk more about batteries and charging in a separate video because there's a lot to talk about that topic. So let's move on to SD cards. The GoPro takes a micro SD card right in here. Now, luckily I had used a bunch of SD cards for a previous project. So I had about 12 SD cards that I could use. And it turns out I used all 12, pretty much all 12. So now you've got these 12 SD cards. How do you separate the ones that you've used from the ones that you haven't used yet? Well, I've had this uh, little think tank Peewee PPR wallet for five, 10 years from when I bought a think tank bag. And this worked out really well. It was perfectly functional and it ended up working really well. And that way I could keep my used cards and my new cards separate and not be confused about them. So that was that. Now I stored the cards and the extra batteries and the charger along with a few other important things in a Pelican 1040 case. The Pelican 1040 is big enough that I could put a number of things in here, but not too big that it wouldn't fit in the ammo cans that we're all given when you get on some of these boats. Now, I also carry the Joby Gorillapod. This is actually the Gorillapod Focus. I believe now they call it the 5K because it supports a five kilogram camera. You'll notice that the Joby ball head has a Arca Swiss mount on the top here. So now I can take my camera and just mount it on the tripod. And now I can plop this down in the sand, maybe do a time-lapse, which I did several times. So that was really, really useful. Now, one thing I wish I brought that I didn't was a blower brush or blower or brush. Having this thing that just blows the dust away is really useful when you're down in the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon is filled with sand and it's sand that is finer than any sand you've ever seen before. You know, I grew up on an island off the coast of Miami. I know sand and I've never seen sand this fine. The sand gets everywhere. When you open up the battery case, it would be a good idea to just kind of blow it out before you seal it up, just to make sure there's no grains in there that's going to you know, cause the camera to leak. I didn't have a problem, but I was a little concerned about that, a little worried about that every time I closed the door here. As you can see, after I closed it and put it in the mount, uh, it definitely got scratched up because there were plenty of grains of sand on there and inside the case. It's been, been beaten up quite a bit. So those are all the extras that I needed uh, for this trip. I think it worked out really, really well. And I look forward to sharing the footage uh, and turning it into really interesting movies over the next few weeks or months. Um, for more about this trip, you might want to click on the, this video for learning about how to use a toilet in the Grand Canyon. I've got some more videos coming up about uh, life on the Colorado River going down the Grand Canyon, but the toilet one is the first one that's out. Don't worry, it's not too gross. And some of the other videos are coming out about the pole, the peak design clips, and a number of other things, power, all of those will come soon. If you want to see those videos as soon as they come out, click on the subscribe button down below and notification button right next to it. And then you'll be notified as soon as those videos come out. So thanks so much for watching and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.